This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321 and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at Noodler's Red Black. I'll be doing a writing sample on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. I'll also take a look at a writing sample that I did earlier on copy paper. I'll show some inks from my collection that are comparable to Noodler's Red Black. And finally I'll show the results of my water resistance test. Noodler's Red Black was very pleasant to write with using a glass dip pen and other than the first letter that I wrote, it wrote very uniformly. The swatch that I did with my tweezers grabbed the paper very nicely and made a nice crisp swatch. I didn't see any sheen in any of the scribbles that I did with the glass dip pen or on the little drip of ink at the end of the swatch. I'm going to begin with a Pilot 78G. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib. The writing sample with this extra fine nib is very legible and it was very nice, no scratchiness. Next I'll be writing with a Lamy CP1. It also has a stainless steel extra fine nib. As you can see, the Lamy Extra Fine puts down a much broader line than the Pilot Extra Fine. It's nice and smooth and very pleasant. Let me see. Yeah, this is smooth. Next, I've got a Platinum 3776. It has a 14 karat fine nib. There's some feedback just by the nature of this nib being so fine. It's a, it looks like it's putting down a little bit broader line than the Pilot Extra Fine, but let me see. I'm going to see which one's smoother. There's a little bit of feedback there, or I consider it a little bit. If you're not a fan of feedback, you might consider that a lot. I would say, I don't know, they they both have feedback, but they just feel different. I think the issue is I can hear it more with the Platinum. They're both nice to write with, if you don't mind a little bit of feedback. Next, I've got another Pilot 78G. This one has a stainless steel medium nib, and it's the older style nib that has the stamped imprinting on the nib instead of laser engraved. This is just glassy smooth. It's not putting down a whole lot of ink but just very pleasant and in, in all the writing samples I've done earlier today this was always just very smooth. This is probably the pen that I will do my long-term testing of this ink in. It's a nice match color wise not an exact match but they look good together and just very enjoyable to write with. Next I've got a Pilot Pluminix it has a stainless steel calligraphy medium nib. I 
Again, not a very wet nib, but just glassy smooth. This ink seems to pair very nicely with the Pilot nibs. Just something about them works, works well together. Next I'll be writing with a Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. Oddly enough, this broad nib was not as smooth, not as glassy smooth as the Pluminix or the Pilot. It, it had a satiny smoothness. I just had a little bit more control when I was writing. And that was very pleasant. That, you know, your nib doesn't feel like it's just going to slide off the page. And I find that that little bit of control makes my handwriting seem a little nicer. call that silky smooth. And finally, I've got a Jinhao X750 and it has a 1.5 stainless steel nib. Again, kind of like the Caveco it wasn't as glassy smooth as the Pilot nibs, but it was very smooth. Felt very silky, very luxurious, and very enjoyable to write with. While this dries, I'll take a look at the copy paper. The writing sample done on copy paper was very pleasant. The only exceptions were the Platinum felt a little scratchy, and it was just borderline between being unpleasant and scratchy. I went ahead and put scratchy because I felt like if I wrote on this paper for a long time, the nib would pick up some paper fibers. And when the nib does that, it starts writing kind of messy because those paper fibers start wicking out ink and it just writes a little messy. And I felt the same way about the Extra Fine 78G. It was just on the borderline between being scratchy and just a little bit of unpleasant feedback, but all the others were very pleasant to write with. The wider nibs, the the letters are a little bit, little bit jagged, but not bad, and everything else just looked really nice. This is the back of the red-black writing sample, and here's a couple other inks above it and the bleed through on the page was about on par with the others no worse than them you might be able to see these wider lit nibs a little bit more than on the other ink samples just because of the darkness of this ink so not a bad ink to use on copy paper if you have to when I started writing with Noodler's Red Black the first ink that I thought of was Writer's Blood because this does kind of remind me of a, a blood red, but when you look at those two together, writer's blood has a, a little bit more purple to it. And I remember people saying that when writer's blood first came out, they were commenting on how much purple or pink this has to it. And another thing I noticed was in the shading, in the wetter areas, it gets a lot darker than Noodler's Red Black does. And Noodler's Red Black, I'm seeing a little more orange in it. It's definitely a red ink, but it seems like it might have a little bit of orange to it. As I was going through my ink samples, I was surprised at how similar Noodler's Black Swan and English Roses was. It's a little closer to Red Black than Writer's Blood is. It's not as purple, it's a little more red, but again, it seems to shade a little darker in the in the heavier, the wetter areas, seems to get a little bit darker than Red Black does. Rouge Granat is a little more red. It, I see just a, a hint of orange in Red Black when I compare those two. Now, I've got two more inks that don't really look similar to Noodler's Red Black, but when I was going through my 
water resistance test, the results of the water resistance test that I did for Sailor Monyo Kuzu looked pretty similar to those that I got with Noodler's Red Black. But again, kind of like Rider's Blood, I'm seeing more purple here. It shades darker. And Kuzu has some sheen to it. Let's see, what color is that? A golden or green sheen. And Noodler's Red Black does not have any sheen. And finally, Colorverse Dark Energy. In the swatches and writing samples that I do, looks more brown. But in the water resistance test and when I'm cleaning it out of pens, it looks like it should be a red ink. It, I think it's a just a really concentrated red dye. And it looks more brown than Noodler's Red Black. Okay, in the water resistance test, now we can see why Noodler's Red Black has black in the name. It surprisingly has a large amount of, I guess that's a water resistant black component in the ink. That was surprising. I wanted to show the water resistance test for some of the similar inks. Dimine Rider's Blood has that similar gray or black water resistant component, but surprisingly, it has less of it. But in the writing, it shaded much darker than red black. And Urban Rouge Granite has a pink water resistant component. Colorverse Dark Energy, you see, it has a red water resistant component. Sailor Manyo Kuzu has a black or a possibly a dark purple water resistant component. And Black Swan in English Roses has a really bright red water resistant component. These results were interesting. Okay, the writing sample that I did on Tomoe River paper no bleed through, a little bit of show through, but not bad. Well, here at the end of the swatch, the little drip looked like it almost wanted to bleed through, but didn't quite. It got pretty deep into the paper, but didn't quite come through. There's not any sheen, like I mentioned earlier, but some really nice shading. Look at the shading in that stub nib. And the Caveco Broad looks really nice. My Pilot Pluminix wrote nice and smooth. A lot of times with the Pluminix, the, that calligraphy medium nib writes kind of dry and it feels dry. Well, it looks like it's writing dry with this ink, but it was nice and smooth and just looks very pleasant. There's not a whole lot of difference between the appearance of a wet nib and a dryer writing nib. So I kind of like that feature of this ink. It makes my different pens, my wet pens and my dryer writing pens, write a little more uniformly or at least feel more uniform in the way they're writing. Um, now with the really fine nibs you get a nice uniform legible line. I like that. Very nice. I'm impressed with this ink. I'm impressed with the behavior of it. Now I'm I don't know if it would stain a demonstrator. I usually use a demonstrator with this 78G extra fine nib in it, or at least recently I have been, but I went ahead and moved the nib over to this solid color pen just in case it would stain a clear plastic. I didn't want it to stain the section of that demonstrator 78G. Maybe I do have a, when I do my long-term tests, I need to get one of my JetPens branded pocket pens. Maybe I can start using it to test if an ink will stain a plastic. I'll have to think about that. I have a couple of these little JetPens pocket pens. Maybe I could use one of them for testing inks to see if they stain plastic. Whenever I do my long-term testing, 
I'll check that out. Alright, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.